Welcome to Going to Blue today, everybody. Home of the college football fan. And don't forget about the checklist. Hat check, sunglasses check, Pepsi check, notes check, sources check, and thick skin is a check. And don't forget the same gear to represent your team and yourself in my background. Send it to P.O. Box 360, Liberty, South Carolina, 29657, and get yourself a shout out. On to the next video. Whenever tax time rolls around, we will be extending our shelves all the way over to the door so there will be more room. In case you're wondering, these are the teams that we don't have represented for the mini helmets. Tulane, SMU, Navy, East Carolina, Memphis, Tulsa, Temple, South Florida, UTSA, North Texas, UAB, FAU, Rice, Charlotte, Oregon, Utah, Washington State, Arizona, Cal, Stanford, Colorado, Louisville, NC State, Wake Forest, Boston College, Virginia, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Auburn, Texas a &M, Texas Tech, Cincinnati, Penn State, Maryland, Indiana, Rutgers, Illinois, Iowa, Nebraska, Northwestern, James Madison, Coastal Carolina, Appalachian State, Georgia Southern, Georgia State, Old Dominion, Troy, South Alabama, Southern Miss, Louisiana, New Elm Monroe, Texas State, Arkansas State, Western Kentucky, Middle Tennessee, Louisiana Tech, Liberty, Sam Houston State, Jacksonville State, Notre Dame, UConn, UMass, Ohio, Buffalo, Bowling Green, Miami of Ohio, Kent State, Akron, Toledo, Eastern Michigan, Western Michigan, Ball State, Central Michigan, Northern Illinois, Wyoming, Colorado State, New Mexico, Fresno State, San Diego State, San Jose State, UNLV, Hawaii, and Nevada. You already know what time it is, so you might as well sit down, brace yourself, and buckle up because you are entering the speculation zone. Yes, this will be a Get It Gang video, and if you're not familiar with what the Get It Gang is, it's basically a name that I came up with for the group of people that come up with video ideas and leave them in the comments section of my videos. So if you think you have a good video idea, Leave it in the comments section and I just might use it. On top of that, some people leave comments not intending them to be video ideas, but I like the comments so much, they still turn out to be a video idea for me. So today's Get It Gang member video idea is kind of short. It's from Dana Saunders. Simple question. How come there's no talk of a Big 12 ACC merger? Well, there's... There's probably a lot of reasons why there's no talk about that. Maybe the two parties are just not interested, or the ACC would just never dream of that. But I do think it is worth talking about, because think about all the stuff that we've talked about here on Going to Blue. We've talked about a possible Pac-12, Big 12 merger. It would make sense, but it would definitely suck for West Virginia. We've talked about a Pac-12 ACC merger. It actually makes more sense than you realize. Academics definitely make sense. And you could do pods, that way travel would make a little bit more sense. We've talked about the Pac-12 getting or not getting San Diego State and SMU, which what I'm hearing now is they are definitely getting San Diego State. Not sure about SMU though. We've also talked about the Pac-12 losing or not losing the Four Corners to the Big 12. I'm still hearing that the Four Corners are interested in going to the Big 12, specifically Arizona and Arizona State. Really haven't heard much from Colorado and Utah. We've also talked about Washington, Oregon, Cal, and Stanford going or not going independent. And as crazy as it sounds, the way it was laid out, it actually made sense. We've also talked about the Big 12 talking to or not talking to Fresno State and San Diego State. Basically trying to cut off the Pac-12 from expanding, therefore strongly encouraging the Four Corners to join the Big 12 sooner rather than later. So today... We're going to talk about the possibility of a Big 12 ACC merger. I don't know what the actual possibility of it is or the actual likelihood of it is, but I do think it would make some sense. I have five reasons why the Big 12 and the ACC should merge. Reason number one, it helps the Big 12 strengthen the east side. This would be perfect for West Virginia, Cincinnati, and UCF. Listen, I know the Big 12 wants to strengthen that west side, and I know Brett Yormark wants the Pacific time zone. I understand that, but he doesn't need to forget about the east side. You only have three teams on the east side, Brett. Only three teams. You need to worry about the east side as well. The second reason would be ACC raises the numbers to where dissolving can't happen. Right now, it is possible that the ACC could dissolve. All it takes is eight teams to decide they want to vote to dissolve the grant of rights, and there you go. There goes the ACC, and anybody can go wherever they want. Now, it would benefit the eight teams voting to dissolve because I'm sure they would be promised spots in either the Big Ten or the SEC. But what about the six remaining teams? What would happen to them? Well, if you merge with the Big 12, dissolving is basically impossible because the numbers would go through the roof. Third reason is it actually hurts the Big 10 and the SEC, especially the SEC. Not so much the Big 10 because they would still have options out there in the Pac-12, specifically Stanford, Cal, Washington, Oregon. But the SEC, yes, it would definitely hurt the SEC. Maybe they could still draw some teams out of this potential merger, but the chances of them grabbing those teams of the ACC go down significantly. The fourth reason is I do think that everybody would get more money. 
I don't know if it would be significantly more money, but I do think it would be more money. And finally, the fifth reason why this should happen, or it's a good idea, is it would put the Pac-12 out on an island, eliminating the competition. You would turn yourself into a super conference that would be larger larger than the SEC and the Big Ten. So at that point, the Pac-12 would basically be a sitting duck. Maybe you could pick some members off that. At 28 members, I don't think you need more members, but definitely the Big Ten would come a-calling and start picking some teams off. Maybe the SEC would get desperate and try to grab the four corners. I don't know. I don't know the repercussions of that. Moving on to what this merger could look like. Well, like I mentioned, 28 members, and here's what the membership of this merger would look like. In alphabetical order, by the way. Baylor, Boston College, Boise State, BYU, Cincinnati, Clemson, Duke, Florida State, Georgia Tech, Houston, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, Louisville, Memphis, Miami, Hurricanes, NC State, North Carolina, Oklahoma State, Pitt, Syracuse, TCU, Texas Tech, UCF, Virginia, Virginia Tech, Wake Forest, and West Virginia. So I have two different scenarios, and I've done this in multiple merger scenarios. The first scenario is seven pods of four teams, and the second scenario is four pods of seven teams. Personally, I like the second scenario better, but you might prefer the first scenario more. And on top of that, if you think I made some mistakes as far as what the pods should look like, then let me know in the comments section. Trust me, I am open to other ideas, and I might actually make a separate video on that particular idea. So first up, the seven pods of four teams. I haven't come up with any names for these particular pods. So once again, drop your thoughts in the comments on what you think the names of these pods should be. The first pod would be Boston College, Syracuse, Pitt, and West Virginia. Four former Big East teams. Three of them now are in the ACC and one of them now in the Big 12. Of course, we know West Virginia is the team that's in the Big 12. A lot of great rivalries in this particular pod. It's very regional. I like it. I think that the merger would actually be able to get more money out of Boston College because they would be guaranteed to play Syracuse, Pitt, and West Virginia every stinking year. And those three games, I guarantee Boston College fans would want to watch. I don't know what you would do about the other games, but those three games, they would definitely watch. The next pod would be Virginia, Virginia Tech, Cincinnati, and Louisville. Makes a ton of sense right there. You keep Virginia, Virginia Tech rivalry locked in. It's going to be played every stinking year, which, by the way, in the previous pod, you're locking in the backyard brawl, West Virginia, and Pitt. I'm trying to focus on locking in these rivalries, making sure that they get played every stinking year. So for the second pod, you're locking in Virginia, Virginia Tech, and who knows, Louisville, Cincinnati, that could be a good rivalry as well. So the third pod looks like this. It's basically the North Carolina pod. You have Wake Forest, NC State, Duke, and North Carolina. And you're locking in all four of these teams. All four of these teams have rivalries with each other. So they will be made sure to play each other every stinking year. The fourth pod is the Miami Hurricanes, UCF, Florida State, and Clemson. So basically, it's the state of Florida plus Clemson. So you're locking in Miami Hurricanes and Florida State. And you're also locking in Florida State and Clemson. UCF should be able to develop a decent rivalry with Miami Hurricanes and Florida State. I like that pot. The fifth pot is a little bit wanky, but it's the best that I can come up with. And it is Georgia Tech, Memphis, Iowa State, and Houston. So you have Georgia Tech on the east side. You have Memphis, which would serve as a bridge to the other two teams, and that would be Iowa State and Houston. The two closest teams to Memphis, and Memphis bridging the gap between Iowa State, Houston, and and Georgia Tech. So the sixth pod looks like this. Boise State, BYU, Oklahoma State, and Texas Tech. I think regionally it makes sense. Not much as far as rivalries going on in there, but I think it makes sense for a pod. And finally, the seventh pod would be TCU, Baylor, Kansas, Kansas State. You're locking in TCU and Baylor. They're playing every stinking year. And Kansas, Kansas State, they're also playing every stinking year. So there's my scenario of seven pods of four teams. And I'm sure I messed up some of that, so let me know how you think you would correct it. So the second scenario would be four pods of seven teams. This is the one that I like much, much better. The first pod would be Boston College, Syracuse, Pitt, West Virginia, Cincinnati, Virginia, and Virginia Tech. The only team in there that's not a former Big East member would be Virginia. And I thought about putting in Louisville in there over Virginia, but I thought, nah, I'd rather lock in the Virginia-Virginia Tech rivalry. That needs to be played every single year. But all these other rivalries are locked in, especially the backyard ball pit in West Virginia and the Black Diamond Trophy rivalry, West Virginia and Virginia Tech. So I really like that pod. The second pod would be Louisville, Iowa State, North Carolina, NC State, Duke, Wake Forest, and Memphis. So you have the state of North Carolina with North Carolina, NC State, Duke, and Wake Forest. 
You have Louisville, which stretches a little more west. Memphis right there with them. And that bridges the North Carolina teams to Iowa State. So it's keeping it as regional as possible with Louisville and Memphis serving as the bridges between the North Carolina teams and Iowa State. I think it makes the most sense with what members you have. The third pod would be the Miami Hurricanes, UCF, Florida State, Georgia Tech, Clemson. And then you got to stretch a little bit. Baylor and TCU. Remember, I put Memphis and Louisville in the other pod, so there really is no bridge rich teams, however, do have the three Florida teams, plus Georgia Tech, plus Clemson, and then Baylor and TCU. Not that far away, and that's only two games for the rest of the pod. Now, for Baylor and TCU, that's that's going to be some travels, not going to lie. But you're locking in the Baylor-TCU rivalry. You're locking in Miami Hurricanes-Florida State, Clemson-Florida State, Clemson-Georgia Tech. I think it's a good pod. And finally, the last pod would be Boise State, BYU, Texas Tech, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, and Houston. I think it makes sense regionally. And you're locking in Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, State and Texas Tech. I think really the only team that looks kind of out of place would be Houston, but it's the best that I could do with that particular situation. Overall, I think it's a good looking pod. So y'all let me know in the comment section, number one, what do you think the chances are of the ACC actually merging with the Big 12? Number two, which one of these two scenarios did you like the best? Number three, if you didn't like how my pods were set up, let me know how you would have the pods set up. And finally, number four, what kind of names would you come up with each of these pods? That's all I got for for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.